Give thanks for Jesus. Many years ago, as the story is told, a devout king was disturbed by the ingratitude of his royal court. He prepared a large banquet for them. When the king and his royal guests were seated by pre-arrangement, a beggar shuffled into the hall, sat down at the king's table, and gorged himself with food. Without saying a word, he then left the room. The guests were furious and asked permission to seize the tramp and tear him limb from limb for his ingratitude. The king replied, that beggar has done only once to an earthly king what each of you does three times each day to God. You sit there at the table and eat until you are satisfied. Then you walk away without recognizing God or expressing one word of thanks to him. That's a story I came across. And as I share that story with you on this Sunday following Thanksgiving, known as Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday, one month before the festival of the Nativity as we celebrate Jesus. I say to you, my sisters and brothers, beware of ingratitude. Let us not forget to show our thankfulness to God, the King of Kings, who has given us Jesus and given us so much else along with that precious gift of his Son. This world in which we live is the Lord's and all that is in it. This season of Thanksgiving is a good time to repent of those times when we might have forgotten to be grateful and to take this opportunity once again to pledge to always show our thankfulness, not only with our lips, but as we give up our lives in service to God, in thanksgiving for what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. I believe, my sisters and brothers, that gathering for worship is one way that we collectively show our gratitude. We come together once a week, at least, to offer to God the worship, the praise, the thanks, that is due unto God. We come together as a community to praise God from whom all blessings flow. So this Thanksgiving season, my friends, for what are you thankful? When someone in the media, one of the journalists, asked the president on Thanksgiving Day, for what he wanted to give thanks. This was while he was at Mar-a-Lago. The same day he made a call to the troops serving overseas, thanked them for their service. He responded to that journalist, and I quote, for having a great family and for having made a tremendous difference in this country. 
have made a tremendous difference in the country. This country is so much stronger now than it was when I took office that you wouldn't believe it. End of quote. That's the president. What about you, my sisters and brothers? For what are you thankful? Today, this Thanksgiving season, as we approach Advent and remember the coming of Christ into the world as a baby and remind ourselves that he will come again as a king and a judge and we all will appear before him. For what are you thankful? In response to the question, if you win, who will you thank first? 16 of the finalists didn't hesitate to acknowledge their allegiance to God. Some of their responses included, I would thank God first. My personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, then my wife. God. God, then my mom. God, of course. I will first thank God Almighty. God, God, then my family. Jesus, he's so good to me. My Savior. Jesus Christ. God. Those were some of the responses that persons gave when they were asked, if you win, if you do well, whom would you thank first? Our theme on this Christ the King Sunday is give thanks for Jesus. And in that reading from the book of the Revelation, the author John says something about Jesus that should make us thankful. He is the faithful witness. If you look at Revelation chapter 1, that passage we read again, you will see John as he begins to write to the churches in this book that we refer to as the Revelation. He says, he refers to Jesus as the faithful witness. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness? Now, John, in those words, is telling us or is saying something about Christ's crucifixion. You see, my friends, the word witness comes from a Greek word that can be translated martyr. A martyr is a courageous and committed individual who will die, who will face death, who will not shun death on account of his or her faith. A martyr is one who will not recant, who will not go back on his or her word, even in the face of de danger and death. And Jesus was the faithful witness because he faced the cross. He faced crucifixion bravely, courageously in out of obedience to God. So today I say give thanks for Jesus, the faithful witness. He was obedient unto death and has given us an example of faithfulness. John goes on to say, he is the firstborn from the dead. The first to be raised from the dead. And the ruler of the kings of the earth. Here, my sisters and brothers, is another reason to be thankful for Jesus. John is saying something here about Christ's resurrection. 
God raised Jesus from the dead. And because of the resurrection of Jesus, we have an unshakable hope. A hope that goes beyond the grave. It is a hope that those who remain faithful to God will not be destroyed, will not be defeated. In the face of the worst that can happen, God's power is greater than the powers of darkness and death. Life is stronger than death. We learn that because God raised Jesus from the dead. And those who die in Christ, those who die believing in Christ, will have the hope because he lives. They will live also. So my sisters and brothers, give your allegiance to Christ. For he is the ruler of the kings of the earth. He is greater than any president, any king that we would serve. It's amazing to me, my sisters and brothers, how we show so much loyalty and allegiance to other human beings, to certain people in, in, in powerful positions. And sometimes we, we lack the same kind of loyalty and, and allegiance and commitment to Christ, whom John describes as the ruler of the kings of the earth, the firstborn from the dead, the one that we are told in the letter to the Philippians that every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. Give thanks for Jesus. He is the faithful witness. He is the firstborn from the dead. And he freed us from our sins. Here then is the third reason why we should give thanks for Jesus during this Thanksgiving season and on this Christ the King Sunday. He freed us from our sins. Hear what John the Revelator writes. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and praise and power forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, my friends, or uh, John in this, in this verse here is making a reference to Christ's salvation or the deliverance that Christ has won for us. Brothers and sisters, Jesus gave his life so that we might be saved. His blood was shed so that our sins might be washed away. I'm sure some of you have heard of John Newton, the composer of the hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Well, you need to read John Newton's story and the story behind that hymn. He lived to be 82 years old and continued to preach and have an active ministry until he was beset by fading health in the last two or three years of his life. But he had quite a life. And you must read his story sometime. But even at that ripe old age, Newton never ceased to be amazed by God's grace, God's love, and told his friends, and I quote, my memory is nearly gone. But I remember two things, that I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great savior. Never forget that, my sisters and brothers, that we are great sinners 
And God is a great Savior who has given us Jesus Christ. Never forget to give thanks to Jesus or for Jesus, our great Savior. In 1860, the Lady Elgin was rammed by the Augusta and sank in Lake Michigan near Evanston, Illinois. A ministerial student named Edward Spencer waded again and again into the frigid waters to rescue passengers. In the process, his health was permanently damaged. Some years later at his funeral, it was noted that not one of the people he rescued ever thanked him. Not one ever thanked him who made such a sacrifice whose health was impaired in order that they might be rescued. And so my sisters and brothers, I end where I began. Don't be ungrateful. Beware of ingratitude. Give your life to Christ who gave his life for you. And if you ask me, I will tell you the best way to show your gratitude, your thankfulness to God for Jesus is to give up your life in faithful service to God through Christ.